Hey guys, it's Marty and welcome to Two Line Slot Cars. This week we're going to tackle a project that I know a lot of you have thought about, but very few of you have tackled. And it's all because I finally made a decision on what analog controller I wanted. I ordered it. It arrived at Two Line Speedway. And I couldn't plug it into my layout. So guys, we talked about this this past week on the live stream. We talked about my new DeFalco DD302 controller and how much I love this controller. But I ordered this controller and when it arrived, I knew that I couldn't even use it on my layout. I do not have a way for this controller to plug into my layout and I had to do something about it. And I spent all of my money on this controller not that the controller was too expensive. It's just that I really try to control my spending on this, this hobby, right? And I don't know that it's fair that my wife feels the pain of every time I try to go to purchase something. So I'm really frugal when it comes to what I spend on the hobby. And so I'd been saving up my mad money, right? And I ordered the controller. I ordered this controller because we go to Cincy Slots. I, we race at Butch's Track. Um, we race a couple places that are analog tracks, and I've been borrowing a controller for a long time. And so I felt like it was finally time that I ordered one. But when it, when it arrived, I couldn't even use it until I go visit one of these other tracks. And so I wanted to change that. And because I kind of spent all my money, all my spare money on this controller, I didn't have the money to go out and buy an Omni slot box or um, other options out there. And my good buddy Daryl, um, months ago, had given me two driver stations um, packages from Slot Car Corner and said, hey, whenever you decide you want to add analog controllers to your layout, here are the driver stations. Uh, I just had them laying around. I thought I'm giving them to you. You might use them. And so they've been laying here, and I've been thinking about really just converting my track over to analog and what that would take. I had the driver stations. I knew a little bit of wire. I could go out on Slot Car Corner or uh, Professor Motor and find the diagram to wire that up. There's a lot of information out there on Home Racing World about wiring your own track. I watched all of Area 51, my buddy George. I watched all of his videos when he was building his wood track. And so I thought that's what I would do. I would just convert my track to analog, kind of leave digital behind. As much as I enjoy digital and have fun with digital, and when new people come over to my track, it's the way I introduce them to slot car racing. The digital experience is so much fun for the beginner. But as I've become a tuner, as I've become... Uh, more of on the racing side of things uh, and enjoying that and going no mags and, you know, all the things that come along with that. I really thought maybe it was time to bail on the digital track. So I got this controller and I started mapping things out in my mind of how to convert my track from a digital into an analog as cheaply as possible. And so what I really had to do was I had to break things down. The easiest way would be to pull the CU out completely wire the driver stations in directly into a piece of track and create my own analog base station. And so to try the controller, that's what I did. Um, I wired up the driver stations. I kind of gave you a sneak peek of that in my video last week and it was fine, but I realized that to clean my track, a lot of times I throw a ghost car pushing around our cleaner and I wouldn't be able to do that without being digital. And so I kind of stepped back and went to the drawing board and said, okay, I don't have the money to right now to ultimately to get an Omni slot box or some other digital analog converter out there. Um, I have the tech slot box thanks to my buddy George, and it has been fantastic. You've seen my journey with that. I burn up a few chips running some hotter motors, some of those things. I, I didn't want to take a chance. The one thing that I wanted to do was protect my CU at all cost, right? I don't need to spend money on buying a new CU. Started thinking about what, what it would take to build an analog converter. And in my head, I, I broke it down in three things. I broke it down to power, being able to switch power from my adjustable power supply and my stock Carrera. That's pretty easy. Plug both of them in. Both of them are plugged into the track in some way. You turn one off, you turn the other one on. You turn that one on or off, turn another one on, right? makes it really easy. Since I was thinking about all these things, I'm like, okay, so how do I make that a switch where up is digital 
down as analog. And so I kind of worked out the details of how to make the power piece happen. And then I, I decided like, okay, so there's power and then there's the CU. And what do I need to do? And what do I know about the CU, um, the control unit that I need to be aware of to protect, right? And so when it's flipped up, the switch is, the power switch is flipped up and we're on digital, the CU fires up and the power taps um, all work, but what we understand is uh, Carrera, Carrera's track is set up to be negative polarity. Most analog tracks and commercial tracks are set up for positive polarity. I have to admit right up front that I do not know a lot about electricity. It scares me. One, I, I don't want to be shocked and killed, and I've been shocked a few times, and so that's no fun, but I don't know a whole lot about it. And I'll just be honest with you, I've I didn't want to mess anything up. And so I kind of over-engineered this project in my head. And so I have notes upon notes upon notes. Um, so I have got notes upon notes upon notes upon notes of, of mapping out this project. And so once I figured out what I needed to do with the CU, understanding that, that the lanes are, are tied together in that control unit because digital, it doesn't matter, um, having lane isolation is not an issue. I already knew that I had a lane isolation because of the text slot box that requires it. So I knew I was good. So what does that look like when I have an analog system and a digital system? So I had to kind of map that out on my head and how I protect, how I split the, the lanes so that lanes are isolated. And then how do I um, make sure that my power taps work? And then the third piece I had to do was understand, here's how the analog system gets attached to the track. It's positive polarity. It's the opposite of what the Carrera system is. And so I need to understand what it would take to isolate the analog system. So when I'm in digital, the analog system's isolated. And when I'm in analog, the digital system and the CU is protected and isolated. Started pulling out toggle switches that I had, right? I just started mapping out how do I need to wire this up? How do I need to protect it? And when I broke it down that way, it, it wasn't simple. But I started mapping it out and it started making sense to me of how this digital to analog conversion box might work. Full disclosure, I mean, this isn't about Marty building a box to compete and stealing anybody's ideas or anything like that. I just know a lot of guys have done this. They talk about it in the forums all the time. I didn't really have the money to go out and buy what I needed. So I try to be resourceful. This channel is about beginner slot cars, uh, intermediate slot car people um, that are still learning a lot of the things, right, about this hobby. And so that was what I appro- how I approached this. So, so my first thing was, I don't really know what I'm doing. And I need to admit to that. And I know that there will be people that will watch this video and they will tell me all the things that I did wrong. And that's fine. I can handle that. I can take criticism. I, 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 I want to learn and I want to make a second version better, right? Um, but I have only have one track, so my brother's track, when he finally builds it, we'll build the second version that will be way better than this first version. This is a crude um, project. This, this is really just working out the details to see if we could make it work, and um, it's an experiment. And so I did some things and made some decisions, mostly to protect the CU. So I really don't know what I'm doing, and that's okay. Two, I over-engineered this thing. I'm sure there is a way more efficient way to do this. And that's what I want to learn. But this was our first go at it. We, we just want to see if we can make it happen. I wanted to be able to use my controller and yet still use my layout for digital. The other thing I wanted to create, um, I, wanted, I, wanna, I wanna help not hurt, right? I, I want to put something out there in home racing world. I wanna put something out there on YouTube that will be helpful. Not just today, but five years from now or 10 years from now. When I was thinking about what my channel is about, um, from the beginning, it's about helping beginners get better at the hobby. And so I think that helping people understand how this stuff works, you know, what what you need to do to make this converter work um, from the eyes of a beginner, right? From the eyes of somebody who's not an electrician, who doesn't wire electronics for a living, so I, I go into this, I don't know what's available out there from an electronic standpoint, 
maybe there's a device that I don't even know exists that makes all of this stuff happen inside that box for me. But I know that you can do a lot of things with just on and off switches, right? I mean, the computer is basically a bunch of on and off switches. That's, that's the approach I took. I want guys like me to be able to build this thing. And then I wanted to create a schematic. No, that's not it. I wanted to create a non-schematic schematic for this, this project. And what I mean by that is I don't really know how to read an electronic schematic. I know enough to understand a little bit, but I don't have all the symbols memorized. Um, so I can look at a, at a schematic of an electrical device and kind of figure out how it works. So I, I know what the power in is. I know what voltage is. I understand those things a little bit. But to sit down and read a schematic, it's difficult. And I know that I'm not alone in that. I know that there's a lot of guys out there that do not know how to read a schematic and that this project is super intimidating. And so I wanted to create a non-schematic schematic that basically labels everything that is color-coded with wire so you know exactly how to wire this thing up. And in the end, if you follow this schematic, this non-schematic schematic, it will work. That's kind of my ground rules for this project. It's not a complicated project, but there's a lot going on and you have to wrap your mind around it. So I hope that I can lay some groundwork that makes it super easy for somebody to do this on their own if they want to try. And I want them to be able to do it as cheaply as possible. All of the items you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot or Menards or your local hardware store or Radio Shack, if you still have one of those, all of the parts to build this are readily available right in your neighborhood. Um, you don't have to order. Now, you can probably order them on the internet and save a little bit of money, but I wanted guys to be able to go out to their local hardware store, get everything that they needed, and come home and build this. So let's dig in. First, let's go take a look at how the box works on the track. So let's go hit the track. Okay, a quick view of the layout so you can see how things are laid out. Um, eight foot by 24 foot track. Um, there's one of the driver stations, that's the blue lane, and then the white lane here is actually a black um, lane, because that's what I had. And those are mounted right here on the table. Um, I will probably change those out, but here's the box. And again, I over-engineered this thing. But basically, um, I haven't labeled this yet. Again, this is a project, um, still a work in progress. But this is our power switch. Down is analog, up is digital. And these are the isolation. So when these top two are up, the analog track system, which I basically mounted all those wires in a straight piece that goes right next to the start finish line. Um, the CU. And uh, so the top two are isolate the analog and the bottom two isolate the digital control unit, the CU. Okay. So uh, we'll flip the switch and we get power for digital. And we are using Smart Race. So it gave us the caution. Move this controller out of the way, and we will grab a digital car, put it on the track, digital controller, hit start. Three, two, one, go! And we will run a digital lap around, lane changers work, into the pits. Okay, so we see that it works digitally. So now um, we will switch it to analog. And so basically um, we will flip the power. We lose power in the CU. And we'll flip all of those down. Now we're in, in analog mode. 
and we know I don't have any LED lights. That's probably something I would want to put on there. But the slotted controller has an LED saying that uh, the track is good. And so now let's grab an analog car. We'll throw it in lane one. My new DD302 controller. And let's race around the track in analog. And the 6A runs pretty good. And so there you have it in its simplest form, analog to digital, all in one box. Now, just some things I did with this box. Again, this was an experiment. Um, if I were building another box, we would do a few things different. Um, this is a six by six electrical box. Um, I could probably find a project box out on the internet someplace. And I hardwired the driver stations into the box. And so one of the things that I would recommend is that you might go with XLR um, and then be able to wire your driver stations in, um, have it modular with XLR. Okay. Um, that would be one thing. Um, I, I kind of like having the analog in one piece because there's not a lot of room in the CU to, uh, to, to hide your wires and to, to connect. Um, and what I was able to do is use the same jumpers. So I have four sets of jumpers and they're all connected here in the CU. And because of these switches, they change polarity. Remember, the Carrera digital system is a negative polarity. The analog system is a positive polarity. And because of that polarity switch in the CU, it's why I have so many switches to isolate. I know that I could probably combine the, the commons and probably go down to three switches. Um, and these are all, um, these switches are all dual pole, dual throw. Um, another change I would probably make is a three-way switch for the power. So middle would be off, both off, just so you can switch these without creating any kind of uh, um, shorts or anything in the system. And so that might be nice to be able to just throw that in the middle, everything be off, flip your switches, and then go power up the digital or analog. Um, this, one of the things you have to understand, you have to come in and isolate each lane. So I basically had to put a switch to separate these two lanes so they're not connected internally, and then separate them from the CU so that when we're running in analog mode, we don't get anything, uh, we get zero current back feeding into the CU. I wanted to protect the CU at all costs. So again, I might be able to do that more efficient. I'm always up for suggestions, but this way I knew by flipping that switch, I was killing both the power and the common. Um, there was no voltage going to the CU. It's fully protected. I ran some tests some other ways, and until I did the same thing with the analog, with both of these lanes, being able to isolate them um, and basically cut them off to the world, <laughs> um, the CU would show shorts and go crazy until I actually put the second set of switches in. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward, works great, and, um, and it's pretty inexpensive. Okay, guys, that's the end of part one of this video series of the DIY project for all of you Carrera digital guys out there who would love to build your own digital to analog converter box. So I want to make this simple. I want to make it easy for you to do. Um, and, and we'll go step by step. So this first video was basically kind of how I wrap my mind around the project and take a look at how it works. And in the next video, we will break it down by going through my non-schematic schematic and um, tear into the, the CU and the track so you can see what the wiring looks like. And we'll, we'll walk through it step by step. I want to make this project as easy as possible for you. 
And so I'm pretty excited about the about being able to accomplish this. Um, I'm just a regular guy that doesn't know a whole lot about electronics, um, but I was able to make this work, um, and it's it's working right behind me. You saw it in the video. I'm pretty stoked about that. So so next week, part two will come out. That will give you all the details of the project. Um, it is truly a DIY project that you can get the get all you need locally at at your hardware store and make this happen. And I'm pretty excited about that. And I want to share that with you. So if you like this kind of content, guys, hit the subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. Hit the bell so you get notified anytime I put out a new video. I'm really excited about this. This might be the most important video that I've ever put on my channel. I think it's content that will um, that will live not just for the next few months, but for years to come. It will be a resource. I'm hoping it will be a resource for people to use. So guys, again, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week when we continue to part two of the DIY Carrera Digital to Analog Converter Box. So guys, thanks for tuning in and go have some fun racing. Mm-hmm.